ABC7 has this, a warning about porch pirates in Canada is getting a lot of attention, but not for why you'd think. Police in Quebec issued a warning, not to the pirates themselves, but to victims. They were advised that Canadian law means people should not be posting videos of alleged package thieves or risk violating their privacy. Canadian police say instead, anyone who has video evidence of a crime should turn it over to authorities and not post it publicly. So here is comms officer Lieutenant Benoit Richard explaining this uh, policy. You cannot post the images yourself because uh, uh, you have to remember that in Canada we have a presumption of innocence and that posting that picture could be a violation of private life. Instead, he says if anything is stolen, call 911. If you get some proof that somebody might have stolen something, then call the police, give the proof to the police, and then we'll do the, the investigation. We're br we'll bring that person to justice and we'll file some charges. Uh, it's just amazing. Amazing. People, this epidemic of package thieves, people walking up onto private property and stealing your private property. And the police in Canada are worried about uh, are worried about the thieves and the fact that they might be getting publicly shamed. A presumption of innocence. So I'm just trying to figure this out. Like, maybe you can help me. What What is the scenario where somebody could walk up on your porch, steal your package off of your porch and yet be innocent? of stealing. What's the scenario where you could watch someone steal something from you and yet they are innocent of stealing? Last year, because of you, Preborn's network of clinics saved over 58,000 babies. And thanks to you uh, and to everyone who made this possible. We came down here to Jacksonville with nothing, just the clothes on our back. And I knew I had to change and it was time to change. So I was just getting on my feet and I met someone and I got pregnant and I wasn't ready. How am I gonna raise a baby? And I barely can take care of my daughter and myself right now. I Googled abortions and I scheduled an appointment thinking it was an abortion clinic. They did my first ultrasound. Seeing the, the ultrasound, it impacted me to the point to where I broke down crying. The nurse reminded me that it was a blessing from God. I was thinking about if I wanted to keep the baby or not. When I was at the clinic, after they told me how far along I was and that the baby had a heartbeat, I cried and they gave me a minute by myself in the room. I broke down and I prayed to God. I asked the Lord to, when I walk out of those doors, to just give me the strength to be able to go through the pregnancy. Made my decision at that time. Women's Center called me out of the blue and said that they had a lot of stuff for me and they would like for me to come in. They gave me cribs and diapers and so much stuff. It's amazing. It touches my heart. It makes me feel special. It makes me feel like there's people in the world that does care. They gave me hope, the strength to believe in myself that I could do it. Treasure I chose because I know that she was a gift from God and she's just gonna be a treasure. I'm super grateful that I'm able to go down this journey with my daughter and I'm just super glad that I didn't have an abortion. I've learned how to trust God, how to listen to God and to trust myself and to do the right thing and not be selfish. It feels amazing. When Antoinette found out that she was pregnant, she was in a bad place. She didn't know how she could uh, raise her child on her own. She searched for an abortion clinic, but God led her to a pre-born clinic where she was introduced to her baby via ultrasound. When she saw her baby and heard her heartbeat, she broke down crying, and the nurse reminded her that a child is a blessing. Antoinette chose life. Preborn saves 200 babies each and every day for just $28 a month. You can sponsor an ultrasound and help save a life. When a mother sees her baby on the ultrasound and hears his heartbeat, she is twice as likely to choose life. So let's join together and help mothers choose life. Just dial pound 250 and say the keyword baby. That's pound 250, baby. Or visit preborn.com slash Matt. That's preborn.com slash Matt. Now, I understand that if you heard secondhand about someone stealing someone else's package, then you can't be sure the person is guilty. Um, if you saw somebody taking a package off of somebody else's door, it, it might look like they're still, but maybe they're not. Maybe that's a family member who's going to collect packages because the resident is out of town. Like, you know, sure. But if it's your package and it's your house and it's your porch, 
and someone you don't know takes it, how could they be innocent? Okay, presumption of innocence is a legal, I think this is a general point that needs to be made here, because we hear this a lot about innocent until proven guilty. Okay, innocent until proven guilty is a, is, a, is a legal principle for courtrooms. It doesn't apply to, to individual people. It doesn't apply to us. It doesn't apply to, like, your, your brain. Okay, in your brain, you're allowed to see that someone is doing something and know that they're guilty. And you can even say it. It's only in the courtroom. The courtroom has to pretend, essentially, or, 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 or come in for, with, with the premise, uh, with the starting premise that, that we don't know if you're guilty or not. And we're going to find out in the course of the court uh, of the trial. Okay, that in the court, outside the courtroom, we don't have to presume innocence of anybody. Like you can, if you see someone committing a crime, you obviously know they committed it. You don't have to pretend you don't know because they haven't been, well, I just saw him do this thing, but I need to, but now a, he needs to be a, a, a jury of people who didn't see him do it, need to also say that he did it in order for me to know that he did it. No, 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 that's not how it works. Especially when there's a, you have a scenario where they could only be guilty. There's no other explanation. Well, okay, maybe, like, what would be a scenario where someone would take your package and they're not guilty of that? Maybe if, maybe if they thought that the package was a bomb and they were running up to take it to defuse the bomb, you know, and if, and, and if this is like a diehard scenario, uh, Maybe then that wouldn't cause, I mean, they're still taking the package though. It doesn't belong to them. So technically, I, I don't know. But maybe in that case, you wouldn't call that theft. Is that the theory? I guess it's technically possible. But for all intents and purposes, if somebody takes your package, you can be certain that a theft took place. Just like if somebody walks up and punches you in the face, you could be certain that, a, that an assault has taken place. It happened to you. It happened to your face. You were right there, right? Uh, and they might, and you know, the thing is, they might end up Walking free, they, the, a jury might or a judge might say, "Well, yeah, well, we don't know if that really happened." Everybody else might not, but, but you know because you saw it. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to DailyWire.com or by going to the Matt Wall Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.